Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Practicing My Way Back. Um, lots of cool stuff going on this week. Um, the biggest thing I'm thinking about is perspective. Um, with specific regard to practice techniques, real real nuts and bolts stuff. Um, again, I was, I was at my occupational therapist. Uh, and she was explaining to me a really interesting idea. Um, which will kind of sound kind of messed up at first, but um, bear with me on this. So she was saying that when you're going through some kind of rehab thing, or you're even trying to learn something, if you watch yourself, like for example, my hands, I'm wa I watch my hands trying to do whatever it is I'm trying to do, and I'm making mistakes, the visual elements are actually picking that up and kind of reinforcing those pathways of the mistake. It's like I'm learning the mistake rather than learning what I'm trying to do. Um, most of the time that's not a problem. I know I've, I've, I've talked to a few of you about um, being careful to avoid practicing mistakes, reinforcing those mistakes. And that's, that's largely about just making sure that you deal with them when they come up and not ignoring them. Um, in this case, um, where you have a, a deficit like I do, where it's much harder to make those corrections, the risk of reinforcing those mistakes by, by seeing you seeing yourself do them is much greater. So she had a couple of cool things that we did that, that helped work around them. Um, work around uh, you know, making a mistake or, or visualizing a mistake. Uh, but what, what got me thinking about um, was the idea of uh, applying a little bit of blind practice to my work, which is what I've done this week. And I've just done it on scales. Because um, I'm, you know, I'm largely pretty good with these things, but once in a while I kind of get off filter. And I've been noticing sometimes when I play through my scales, um, because my confidence is shaking a little bit, I'm kind of second guessing myself. I'm watching the keyboard going, is this right? Is this right? And a few times it's gotten me into trouble. So, in a nice, relaxed, slow tempo, I just kind of try and feel my way through. But it's, this requires that you have the fingerings memorized and you have enough confidence about this that, that you can do it. But it kind of it takes that element of second guessing away and it kind of removes the risk that I will. I will memorize a mistake by, by seeing it happen, right? Um, so that's been kind of cool. And what it also got me thinking about, I mean, these things are never, <laughs> for me, these things are never singular. Um, they're always pervasive through all kinds of other things that I do. It got me thinking about the photography project that I mentioned last week. Um, and how, I, I mentioned I was having a friend uh, conversation with my good friend Mike. And we were talking about how um, it's very easy when you're taking pictures to kind of make these analogies to what we do musically. And I said to him, it makes me, the process of doing this, going outside and saying, hey, that's a cool picture. And while I'm on my way to going and getting that picture, seeing something else that also could be a cool picture, made me start to wonder how much we actually miss by having certain senses shut off or by not having certain perspectives open to us. Now, I'm, I'm suggesting to myself and to you, actually, if you find it useful, that, yeah, you shut, your, you shut this one sense, the sense of sight off while you practice certain things, but it also opens, it opens up and enhances this tactile world, the world of touch. It's like, how can I figure out where I am, where I am on the keyboard? How do I identify Okay, there, that's a G flat. I know that because there's two black notes above that. And, you know, I can roll down here and that's an E flat. And I know that because of where I am. And I know that this is a D flat major scale. You, you, can, you can do that visually, certainly. You can, and for many of us, that's how we start. But sometimes it's good to um, forget about one sense and focus on another one. All in all, I mean, I was... Uh, I was Unrelated, but related, I was in Boston for Tuesday, two days this week for a neurological consult. And what I found interesting is how plugged in that city is. 
people walking around with headphones on and iPhones and doing all this stuff. And that's their thing and whatever, that's that's fine. It's not a way that I want to live, but I I realized that um, in that kind of environment, people are very shut off to certain things, like the world around them. But at the same time, because they're living in the city and the city comes with certain hazards, they're also very clued into certain things. Like there's the streetwise component. You know, I lived there, I lived there for a number of years. I know how that goes. Um, so I guess what I'm thinking about is where is the, the happy medium? Where's the medium because where we're aware of, where we are aware of everything we need to be aware of in order to function, but also open to the other experience. Because, you know, I'm that photography thing, if that hadn't happened to me, I, you know, I sent my thinking in all kinds of different directions, um, including this one, including the idea of practicing blind. So, I don't know. I don't have any answers to that. Maybe you may come up with some for yourself. Um, I hope that you do. I hope that you at least think about that. Anyway, um, that's my bit for the week. Uh, hope everyone has a great week. Work hard, have fun, and we'll see you next time.